Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, May the 3rd, 2022. The volatility actually is sticking with us. And I'm starting there because it's really great that we have it. And you, you have to just really take a step back and think pure, pure trading, pure price action, pure collecting, uh, you know, the, it, it, what volatility does, it'll take a $100 trade or $150 trade and turning it into 250 or 300. And there are even points when very quickly it'll turn it into a five or $600 trade. And it's very quick and it's very done, but you're just there fulfilling the need at that minute. And it happens often in markets that are trying to consolidate and prepare for what the market's perception is a big, a big affair. So in other words, the Fed meeting becomes a big affair because that's really what is behind all that is happening in terms of declines, in terms of inflation, in terms of earnings, et cetera. So a lot of it, again, if you've been following me, you realize that I continue to talk about the pecking order the food chain when it comes to the financial markets. And what sits, in my opinion, what sits all the way there at the top are interest rates. And what happens to interest rates rolls downhill for sure. When you consistently sit at the top of the hill, no matter what, everything rolls downhill. And you know, yes, starts with an S, rolls downhill very little rolls back up that hill to the interest rates. <clears throat> so here we are. And it just is really great because we get into this numbers coming tomorrow. We'll figure out now everyone is totally now built. We're expecting we got 50 basis points. We got That's what's in our mind, 50 basis points. Okay, good. But then we don't know. Hopefully, it's not going to be 25 basis points, because I think that would be an absolute disaster and should be received as negative. Three quarters, you might get a little bit of a rally out of it, simply because it's like, okay, get this done. And so, you know, take all your medicine at once or take a little bit more medicine now, et cetera, et cetera. So I think here's how I'm looking at it. If they come in at 25, that's not a positive, folks. It's not a positive. It means they're really afraid of inflation and inflation is like a bear. When it knows you're afraid, it's going to charge you. And if it catches you, its claws are mm, six, seven inches and strong and connected to, to rip you apart. And that's kind of what we're up against. And so for Fed to be real dovish is just like, no, I'm sorry. For to think, again, I, I was in, in a conversation about the 10-year note, in a conversation about TLT, uh, and again, the 30-year bond, or even the 20 to 30, those tranches, that the feeling is, is that in TLT, the market has <clears throat> worked itself to a bottom. And I'm like, so what you're implying is that bond prices have bottomed, yields have topped. And I'm looking out there going like, wait a minute, guys. So the 10-year note goes from 0.69 or 0.70 out to 3%, and that should be enough. And no. When you really take a look at the, at the bigger picture, and again, I'm just going to bring it up real quick now, but you can catch all of this. I did this in the um, Eye of the Storm podcast for interest rates. I looked at that big picture for interest rates, and I went into more detail. Please go check it out. Give it a listen. And that's what I'm answering to. That situation is sort of like the markets where correcting at a very long-term rally on this top level. Remember, that's like 90 plus years up sitting up there. <clears throat> on, the, on the cycle level, we're talking 13 years. We're talking 2009. 
2009 is when it bottomed, and it bottomed in March. So we're pushing up 13 years on the cycle level. That's what we're correcting. Two years on the primary level, because primary wave four bottomed in March of 2020. So we get these March lows going. And that's kind of what's going on here. And that's and, and then, then the primary was 2000. The cycle was 2009. Primary was 2020. And the intermediate was 2021. We had a decent low in 2021. And that was for the cycle level. So all in all, we're correcting periods of time. So yeah, if we're thinking we're just correcting that, that first intermediate, well, we've already done it. And now we're, we're heading down in an intermediate degree decline. Um, so this is where we are, and it's going to take time. And interest rates are at the same place. It's going to take time. Interest rates, interest rates that the topped in 1981, and they've been declining since then. 44 years we've had a decline. So are we going to say 42 or 43 years, somewhere in there? If we are thinking that interest rates are done correcting after basically declining from 21% to 0.7%. And we're going back to three. So what did that what is what do we think? So the next drop should go negative. And I'll be honest with you, at this point, if it happens, it's exactly what will happen. And all you need to do is take a look at Japan to really get a clue on what life at that level is like, living under that type of an economy, to try to hold it up and to do what everybody needs to do and to continue the country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Japan is our example. And there's, they're, not, they're not as rosy as, as people think, and neither are we. So corrections are necessary. Corrections are due. It's time to pull in excess. It's time to do it. Now, for today, it was interesting. Again, big picture, no changes. We still sit exactly where we were. We completed the sub-minute wave one. No, we subdividing again. Now we're looking for the completion of wave two. We dropped down to that hourly chart. And you can see it's been very nice. But again, one, two, three, four five. So here's the one little, little bit of sketch here and there. As we worked it all out, that was a huge rally. And there was a pop up and a zip right back down. It was very volatile. Also, volatility continues to remain sky high. So we ended up, I'm going to keep going because we're still working out this too. And I'll come back out. I want to go down to the 15 minute because I'm going to show this this is the bulk of today in fact this is all of today this is what it was like and so our highs were in by eh, quarter of two two o'clock uh this afternoon eastern uh but subsequent to that that was just a quick break and it did hang out for several hours and then it just dropped back in but it was a big old box and uh, initially the box was set early the box was set at 10 o'clock. That's where the high, but the low was pre. The low was just right after the opening. We set the range, and it basically held that range up until uh, 115 Eastern. And that was initially rejected. So, but the moves, as you can see on a 15 minute chart, were pretty big. Like, ba boom, ba ba boom. You know, it just, and it, that volatility. Uh, produces a ton of opportunity, an awful lot of opportunity. And you, sometimes you're going to have to take a little bit of heat. Now, that's the point that I do want to talk about when it comes to trading, uh, particularly day trading, and you're trading a day like today, uh, which was very high vol. So it moved very quickly. And often beyond what uh, I would expect. And again, Moving averages kind of held me together because they remained flat. So the, the tone was set. I had a pretty much a flat 50 and pretty much a flat 200. 20 waffled around the four and the eight bounced all over. 
before and eight, yeah, that's really what controlled the movements. So inside, but on hold, consolidation, a little bit bigger, because this is a big deal. People want to know what is going on moving forward. What are the interest rates going to be moving forward, et cetera? Because we all need to start to do something, maybe. I don't know. So, but in an Elliott basis, nothing has changed. I'm still looking for a big corner to turn and for the market just to get a, a, a crack in the face and give us a day of solid down, wash it out. And that at least will, con will complete that center third. And then we can go into that series. Like right now, it'd be one, two, three, and then at least three series of four bounce, five decline. Four bounce, five decline. Four bounce, five decline. We're going to stair step our way back down. And I still believe we'll come in at around 9,075. In there, a little lower, a little bit higher. It's got a zone. But that's where I think it'll end up, and that'll be wave A. And then from that wave A, yes, I am looking for a B wave, and I am looking for it to be uh, a laugh. I'm looking for it to be interesting. It can be difficult to trade. I hope not. Um, because if you can get our mindset set around what's going to be happening and why, well, we're not necessarily going to be surprised. Once in a while, we will be, but a B wave personality, it's like this the, the spoiled child, you know, who just won't take no for an answer and just does what they want to do. Uh, but we'll when we start it, we'll get there. Right now, we still have decline to come. Uh, as we wait for tomorrow's figures, I think the market will remain pretty much the same. We'll continue to see that consolidation, those that want, those that don't, uh, moving in and out of position. Um, that number comes out 11 Pacific, 2 o'clock Eastern. Uh, I personally will be flat. I have no interest in getting totally annihilated one direction or the other. And, you know, trying to choose. I mean, I, I, I guess I could be called the gambler, but not that much. I don't need that type of adrenaline, adrenaline rush uh, at that time of the day. So, no. Our watch and what we can expect, we continue. If we're looking for this wave two, this could be A, that was B, and now we're in that C wave. The C wave can project out. And let me just throw up the extensions for this little C wave. We can get up. Now, just remember, here's, oh, I'm going to go too far. Can't go above 13,542. That is the start of submenu wave one. Cannot go above it. But we can get close. And we have the 200 at 13,315 and 618 just below it at 13,268. Now that level, 0.618, is the most common for a C wave as it relates to wave A, 0.618. On these lower degrees, 0.618. So if it could get here, maybe even come up and touch that 200. It has additional top side, but 13,433. They may just do it, but I have to tell you, even if it's 50 basis points, or even if it's three quarter basis points, it's not, it, it, I think it could produce a rally because people will think, oh, that's enough for right now. And it's like, so what does that mean? You just turn around and stop buying everything? Like everything's going to change. So the concept is that they will turn bullish. But remember, the bigger picture is not changing. So it's going to be tradable and I will be a buyer when I have to be a buyer and I will be a seller, et cetera. There'll be plenty to do, but I'm not figuring we're turning and we're going to end up back heading up towards new highs. So I am would never return to that style of bullish, not at this stage and not right now with what the unknowns. So just no. But, but bounce, sure. Remember, Elliott Wave is based on human emotional reactions and they're chartable. And if they want to pull out and push a bullish narrative about interest rates, they'll win because it's been weighing heavy on everybody's mind. 
going to back it up just so we can complete this. So again, I don't want to turn it into a dissertation. And I realize that I have been this week. In any case, for tomorrow, it's going to be slow, and but move. The movement will be like today. We'll, we'll get our moves. It may make a big, little bit bigger box, but we'll make our moves high to low, high to low. So just be careful on how you want to trade and understand the parameters will change. If it starts forming a box high to low, and that's where we are, occasionally breaking a little bit more above, it all fits. Until we get that news, there's going to be no, no reason to break too far in either direction. So the market found its comfort zone, and that's where it's going to hang out, I believe. Uh, it's a quick exit down. It's a quick exit back up. Now, here's our topside targets. We have 13,315 and then 13,276, 13,211. And we've already set, we're set around, and we've actually gotten above uh, 145. We've gotten up to 170, I believe, 183. Okay, so downside, it'll just break. We're there. This is the low. So when we start breaking 12,709, we're not that far away. A hard enough push, we'll just break. There truly is not much in between. The support is just minimal in my mind. It's price. And some algorithm might want to use it, but I don't think that it really is valid in terms of that it will hold for any particular reason other than, hey, I think it's support. Um, I don't have fibs down there. The fibs run pretty low. Again, we had areas, well, I can just put it back in, but we have areas that truly should be coming in. Okay, now I'm going to put these in, which I did wrong yesterday. I apologize. I realized when I went back and listened to myself, I put it up one too high. If we're looking for this, my new third wave, I was connecting it up too high and running it from the top of minor one. And that's like, whoops, my apologies on that. If you didn't catch it, why not? Um, I'm going to remove that. So here we are. Still on our bigger picture, 1.618, we're looking for the minute three, we're looking for the minor three. Um, and right now this is minor, actually it's minute. So 11,028 is where I think this minute three ends. And then we get a minute four and then a minute five and that'll finish this minor third. And that minor third, because this was so shallow, comes in way inside of this, and I'm not looking for that. But I think that the minor third could again get us down maybe to 10,500. And then we do a minor four and then a minor five. And that is the one that will finish up the intermediate third. And that is the one I feel that will drop below 10,000 and get somewhere all the way down towards 9,000, actually, because the, the number is 9,077 all the way down. And then that, I believe, uh, will be the completion point for intermediate three, and we're going to intermediate four and intermediate five. And then we are looking at the possibility that we will be back down towards the uh, March 2020 lows. And then we get that big old B wave. And how much longer? I think that because we're just the threes are, are just getting nailed and they they got they're going to happen. I think it could be very quickly down to that nine thousand seventy seven and then a bounce and then back down. So I think there could be a sequence of some things coming up uh, that'll rattle some nerves. I don't know what it's going to be, but just the wave count itself and and the potential uh, kind of tell me you know, that hey something's out there. And it, it's not going to be liked. Doesn't mean that we won't recover because I believe that we will. And then I'm just going up degrees. You know, I will, I do expect when, when we're done and we're down by those March 2020 lows, a B wave to kick all B waves. And that's what I'm looking for, bringing us all the way back up. So, in other words, it's if we end up back down there about 67 ish. 
we've been up at 16,700. So you've been already corrected three quarters, five eighths, three quarters of, of this, the whole drop. And so pretty wild. In any case, tomorrow, be prepared. I personally, like I said, I will be flat uh, at two o'clock, waiting for that number. Have a great trading day. And our next update will be Wednesday, May 4th.